Roll? Yep. All right. Uh, is it going now? It is going. Okay. Welcome, Josh Wade, to the Speared Sundays podcast. G'day. It feels like your, it feels like your podcast because we're using all of your equipment and we're sitting here with your... Is this your producer? No, is Connor's, you Connor, Connor's in this just as much as what I am, financially and just all together. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying that I wish I had a Connor. So, wh- okay, what would you explain yourself as, Connor? If you're off mic, but half of my podcast is off mic anyway. Someone said the other day, are you guys producing partners? And I liked the sound of that. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Producing partners sounds good, yeah. you know, because I don't really have anyone else that works with me on anything else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're in it together and we sort of don't really want help. You know, we yeah. sort of want to be able to go, well, we'll just do it ourselves and then have people go, oh, fuck, why didn't we get involved? Like, that, yeah. that's more... That's uh, totally the way to do it. Exciting. That's, that's what... I, I think that's the future, is everyone just building it themselves mm. because, you know, when you think about all these fucking media things mm. that are already established, why would they let yeah. people like us in? They yeah. already have their thing, it already works. Why would they bring in something that, that might, you know, take the power away from them? Mm. So just build it yourself and let the people figure out what they'd rather watch. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to, you know, like for me, um, I don't want to be, because I don't like it myself when this happens, I don't want to be thrown down people's throat. Whether, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, then yeah. that's, that's fine. And for me, if I don't like something, I'd move along. I'm not going to make a big kick and a shit about it. You know, yeah. just watch it. And I think that's what YouTube's great for. And something that I wish I didn't ignore for so many years, like I spent a lot of time focusing on Facebook for a while and then... Yeah. YouTube ended up sort of dying out for me and then I was like well actually like for me I think the real committed fans are the people that go to a website dedicated to video content yeah. to consume that so now it's about me trying to build that back and prove to people that I can I want to make really good shit for you and it's free take yeah. it no I think it's totally right I probably should introduce you a little bit better beyond your name oh, um, sorry, you know. so you're you're a you're a stand up comedian yeah. and you've got like a large following online mm-hmm. you've been around for for years doing making facebook Little videos while. and youtube stuff yeah. for, for someone who doesn't know you what what is a josh way what is a josh way <laughs> i don't know i'm still figuring it out myself yeah. um uh, I got into, I guess, stand-up comedy when I was about 13, so I was doing, like, pub gigs and stuff like that, and I just, I, it wasn't confidence, it was more just delusion, like, I was like, yeah. I'd seen it on TV, I was like, oh, I can do that, Yeah. and um, it was probably a good thing, though, because I think getting getting started, as, like, as soon as you find the thing that you want to do, start it fucking straight away, oh, don't yeah. delay anything, because the longer you delay it, the longer it's going to take to not be yeah, shit at Yeah, I think succeeding in anything, it's not, it's not so much... Um, talent or, or skill it's it's literally just how long you do it for as long as you're working smart like mm. you can you know throw paint on the wall and yep. you're not an artist yep you know what i mean if you're as long as you're working the smart way really the only difference that that i see between myself and people who are you know so much better than me is time yeah. and and more yeah. successful than me is, is time a lot of the time i mean every now and then there's people that blow up overnight but even then you know, they they can die out if they mm. don't work hard and yep. to, to maintain what they get. And yep. I think that's that's the main thing when you're yep. trying to build something. Yeah, I think it's very easy because I mean we see it all the time. People that make a video that'll get fucking like four hundred thousand likes on Facebook, like it'll just go yep. gangbusters. And for me, it's it's like I feel like I can say it now. It's like cool. Can you last the test of time? Can you actually? Yeah go make that and then make another and then make another and then make another and then make another viral, you know, just keep going, keep going, keep yeah, going yeah. and then sort of be known years later and, and bring up something that you did like three years ago and go, oh yeah, I remember you, yeah, exactly. you did that as well. And yeah. so, but that's the thing is, I, I, you know, I think you would agree. The thing with, um, with us and what we're doing is, could you imagine if, like, a singer or an artist had to release a new song every week and if that new song didn't get 20,000 <laughs> likes on Facebook, they'd feel shit about themselves? Yeah. Like, you, you that's ridiculous. It so is. you spend a bit of time. Well, for me, it was like there was a run. And I think for a lot of people, it's like you have, like, this initial run where just everything that you seem to make just seems to be gold and, the, and you're yeah. the cool new thing for a little bit. 
and you feel you know it reaches a point where then there's some pullback because you know people are sick of seeing you in the fucking news yeah feed because and- it's not so much your ideas or, or your videos are the funniest thing it's just your natural way of how you are funny is so different from everybody else yep. as long as you're being yourself yeah and and yeah you see that all the time you know where, where you, I, I call it the wave where they first mm. come out and then they have like five or so fucking banger viral mm. videos mm. and then and then you see that and and I, I always go oh he could be an, he could be the new thing mm. he could be a, a mm. new person who hangs around and then mm. most of the time they don't but there's there's a few people that that hang on to that wave and just keep fucking going like Frenchie's a great example yep. of someone who I think never really never really lost that wave no of the of the new guy wave yep. is kind of kind of what it is yep. yep and you just keep going and and that's the other thing for me is like because I see the same thing I'll see someone come up that I haven't seen before and go oh fuck this could be you know I can yeah. see that this is a, a new person that could potentially you know because that's sort of the other funny thing is um starting out doing this there was only a few of us and then um you know there's always another person that comes along yeah and sort of joins in but I think what we've got together as a as a group is um well I think we've got each other's back firstly because we're all yeah. living through a similar rejection from the industry especially in Australia which I think is I think is so rare um is in Australia we barely have any kind of drama or mm. shit fights or or mm. like people generally like each other um and and I've I've never really even though what what I do is a lot of time just fucking calling out people for being shit, I've never really done it to Australian creators just because, you know, as you were saying, we're so locked out of mainstream media yeah. that we kind of need to stick together. Yeah, yeah, and I think most of us just aren't shit, though. That's a Yeah, like, exactly, that's another thing. I think the thirst for the dollar and the thirst for... I think it's more for us. It's a, it's our thirst because of that rejection is a thirst for legitimacy mm. and and to be you know it's it's not for the quick buck. Although the, you know I see it happening here more now. I can see there yeah. is that American wave and that American way of thinking when it comes to viral content and stuff like that that's happening here. And you know I reject it. I I despise it. And I I, think I don't think that shit's going to last. I I honestly don't like the whole. It, it's interesting with the with Facebook video. I was talking about it. I, I think that that face on Facebook anyway. It's not. It's all the other platforms are kind of free from this, but on Facebook especially, I feel like comedy has regressed. Like filmed comedy has regressed mm. to its first incarnation, which is the silent film. Like we got so so far, and you look at YouTube where it's like professional TV sketches made by people like us. Yeah. But then on Facebook, the biggest people are making fucking silent film. Yeah. The only difference between you know our silent film and the ones in the 1950s is there's a lot more tits. Yeah, there's a tit thumbnail and some fucking Ariana Grande song in the background. But yeah, yeah I've noticed that as well. And I, I almost feel like, I, I feel like part of that is on purpose because I feel like we've, Australians in general, we fucking, I mean, myself, when I listen to myself in videos and I go, fuck, I've got a horrific accent. Like, <laughs> and and yeah. I think for, for Australians at least to n- translate across the world um, and become more viral, like we sort of need... Or well, those people need to sort of not just not say anything, and and yeah. it's never though. When I've watched them, I'm like, this is not funny. I can see that it's humorous, but there's it's a, there's n- like a ten out of ten chick in there. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, I, I watch those videos just for the girl. Mm. I'm like, ah, oh, she's great. I fucking click it. Yeah, I hate it myself. It works. <laughs> yeah. I know. And then exactly, you just hate yourself. But mm. I think yeah, with with the Australian accent, if you want to go global, you either need to amp it up to eleven mm. or really tone it down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I find it. Um, I I only noticed this as I got older, but I I always wanted to be like an actor and stuff like that. And I'd watch Australian actors on talk shows, and they'd always like their Australian accent was still Australian, but it was not the same. And yeah. and then I noticed that all they were doing was slowing down their words, and they'd say, "Well, you know, it's it's yeah. great to be here, and you know, like it, I don't know how they do it, but it's." No, you're totally right. Like, I, I remember uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was listening to, like, Dave Hughes on the radio, and he talked about how he went and did stand-up in America yep. uh, in front of, like, a big crowd. He tried to make it in America, I think, was what he was talking about. And he went up, and he said he did an amazing set. People were dying laughing. And then he got off stage, and he realized that no one understood what he was saying. Mm. Everyone was just laughing because his mm. accent was really funny. And I yep. was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a kick in the nuts. But I... Um I think as a a overall sort of back to the comedy stuff, um, eventually there is going to be a new crop, um, that, that, and, and, you know, not to sound cocky, but that's what we are. 
Um, th- there is no one else. I don't know anyone else that's doing it. No, not really. Out of, out of us in Australia anyway, there's, there's kind of been five or six people, which is like you, Frenchie, Neil, myself. Yep. There's, you know, I'm obviously going to miss a few. Um, but there's basically like five or six people that have been around since 2012 mm. and there hasn't been too many people or anybody really that's, that's taken over. I've seen people like the, the other thing is I, what I find quite bizarre I remember at the start seeing this sort of stuff and I was pissed off and I get really upset by it but now I just find it more of a like something that's fascinating as a human seeing like people do things that I might have done or or copying styles that other people have done it and sort of mimicking that and then you know turning it into their own yeah and it's sort of funny to sit there and go fuck mate like I didn't think I would ever be in that position that someone would look at what I've done and then go how can I Um, you know, use that as a blueprint to then create, like I'm not talking about blatantly copying anyone, I just mean like people that, that, you know, you become the blueprint at that point, you go, oh. Yeah, which I think is flattering. Yeah, of course it is. It's not, it's not, because I do that all the time where I look at people more successful than me and I don't, I don't necessarily look at their content, I look at how it's made. And, mm. and, you know, what's the format of it and, and how, why, why does that kind of blow up and mm. why does that work for them? Mm-hmm. And you can, take, you can take elements from heaps and heaps of different people. Yep. And, and that's really kind of cool when you see people take stuff from you that's not necessarily your jokes or your humor, but yep. you're like, oh, fuck, I'm, I, I make videos that way too. Mm. Mm. I, I agree. You know, I, um, it, it's funny how Facebook's sort of gone because I remember when, I, when it first sort of kicked off for me, I um, remember, like, there was no real lad Bible pages or anything. There was no aggregator in that, and no one. Yeah. It's either you had you had to make yourself known, but there was no one that would share your videos that would then pop yeah. you up. So it's a different world now where you can make something relatively funny and then send it, and then if you know someone thinks that they can get clicks onto their website, they'll post it up to twelve million people that like their page. Yeah. But for us, it was a little bit different because it was well, you need to go viral on your own page and yeah. you got jack shit to fucking send... Yeah, we, we didn't even do collabs a lot no. of the time. No. Like, uh, it, yeah, it was like in, around from, from like 2012 to 2014, everyone kind of blew up by themselves yeah. and then we slowly started figuring, oh, maybe we should work together yeah. Yeah. and do shit together. And that really worked for a while. Collabs was a really great thing. And then now, really, if you want to blow up, the way to do it is to make something silly and viral under a minute and get it on Lad Bible. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that, I'm, that's still a thing that is extremely beneficial. I wouldn't say that that is... Oh yeah, it's a great but I wouldn't thing. want to live my entire career out of that and going. What's what's the next thing? Because there was a time where I did where I go fuck. I need to think of something in three minutes um, yeah. that needs to go viral. If it doesn't go viral, then I'm going to hate myself and then I'm going to have to delete the video because then it's going to look real sad sitting on my page and I'm going to look like oh he's dead, he's over. Yeah, and it's like that's just not the way that anyone should should you know when you're a content creator you need, you need to have a step back and go well no nah, that's i need to that, it's not fun it. to to create right. what do i think the most people will like like yeah. it's like it's like if you're a chef and you go fuck i should just make big yeah. Macs. yeah you know? exactly well that's the thing and you're looking for external validation on on th- things that don't mean anything at all like once i started to realize well fuck it actually doesn't affect my reality how many fucking fans I have online or how many people watch my videos I still have to pay tax I still have to pay my rent I still have to do all these yeah. other things maybe I'm maybe I'm focusing on the wrong thing and maybe I need to start focusing on just life in general and then the stuff that got me to this point anyway will will follow I'll come up with ideas organically instead yeah. of you know sitting around hating myself yeah, and you then... have to do what, what you want to do mm. really because I, that's that's the best thing that your, your audience responds to like I, I, I suck at making relatable humor really like mm-hmm. like you you're really really good at that and and that's how you kind of got massive mm-hmm. at the start but i was i never really had that all i really had was i, I kind of just did what what i thought was funny which was just pissing people off and mm-hmm. then my audience is super small compared to most of the other people in australia but it it really works and i think that's yeah. it's a it's a much it's a much slower grind and a climb but i think doing that makes people stay which is which mm. matters so much more yeah yeah and you need to also you know i have to commend you for you know basically just being on a constant a constant hustle and that's the thing that i've picked up on myself and i'm like mm, it's very easy to get comfortable yeah it's very easy to think that you know when you're living the high life and it, and it happens quickly um 
you know, and things are going well that, you know, that that's going to be forever. You know, you can't work hard and then get to the point where you go, okay, now I'm content with where I'm at yeah. because you won't grow. Especially you with will... what we're doing because yeah. the internet forgets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I always say to people, I go, mate, you're only as good as your last video. You yeah. could have made something that went fucking gangbusters two years ago. But if you don't make something good today, nobody gives a fuck what you did. Oh, yeah. Right. Cause there's always the next new fucking video that goes yeah, exactly. nuts. And yeah, yeah, it's sort of hard to keep up. But at the same time now, I, I, like I said, I don't really g- give a fuck what... Like, I post it to the people that want to see it, and if they share it with their friends, then, you know, that's the only... I don't want to be a... My, my days are gone of trying to fucking get it out to as many people and getting, you know, stupid clicks from, from places that, you know, I don't really want the clicks from anyway. I don't really yeah. want to be appealing to everyone. That's well, not I, think, I, I think at the start... You have to do that. You do you have, have to, do to that. just, you have to, like, that's what I tell anyone who's starting yes. out is like, just be fucking shameless. Yep. Do whatever you can to get yep. the most amount of views. But once you have that, that base of 20, 50,000 people around that number, you can, you can then divert into, okay, now this is mm. what I do. Mm. Kind Spot of thing. on. Spot on. That's exactly the truth. You have to build the foundation and yeah. that's hard work. And sometimes, you know, you and, and the other thing is, it's really hard work at the start. It's harder to yeah. get it going than what it is to continue it going. Well, actually, I don't know. There's, there's struggles in both sides of yeah of that. Wait, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's harder. Well, I don't have the perspective because I wouldn't know what it's like to. I've only started once. I've been maintaining for a very long time. Mm, mm. But um, I, I, I would think that that I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing where it's like. It, Sometimes I'm like, it must be harder to start now because you're competing with with us mm. and everybody else. Mm. Like, there's definitely more people. Like, I think what really benefited us in, in the beginning was there was no one. Like, Alex Williamson made videos was before it. us, and yeah. that was it. Yeah, and that was an oddity to have, like, an, uh, like an Australian that was making videos online. There was pushback on that. Like, yeah. Uh, but... I mean, that's just obviously where it's going. And, and like I was talking to someone today, uh, they was, I just dropped a fucking pencil. I didn't peg it. I was <laughs> pegging it at Connor. <laughs> Have you paid me? Um, no. Um, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, there was, there was that rejection, but then there was more rejection and then it just kept going and we kept going and we kept going and we kept going and then... Now we're still here, and it's yeah, like so it's now got it's more accepted. momentum than so ever. I'm like, I'm like, oh, you're competing with people much bigger than you, but also you must have an easier route to start because the Australian, mm. like, yeah, when we started, people were like, oh, Australians making videos, fuck off. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, now, now it's very accepted. So I don't know. I suppose you know. I suppose it's just as hard, really. Yeah, I, yeah. I think there's there'd be different challenges, but it's probably the same yeah. sort of climb in in some sort of sense. Um, but yeah, we've definitely broken a. A barrier for people to to get into this and this is probably where you know it's going to be not just in australia but anywhere for the rest of the world it's the internet and that's how yeah. people are going to get get known and like for me it was getting out of townsville getting out of this little country i wouldn't say country town but it's a it's country it's called townsville it's yeah okay <laughs> okay yeah all right. <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to like think of something but you spot on um, does it have a nickname some people like throw around townie, but I've ne- yeah. I've never actually heard anyone organically call it townie. It's just, yeah, okay, it's so forced... it mustn't be that bad. Uh, my theory is, if your city has a nickname, it's a shithole. Yeah, like nah. Bris Vegas, that's a shithole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bris Vegas. I'm like, where is the Las Vegas? Where did you get this Vegas part from? Because it's yeah. nothing or like Radelaide. I guess just this real culture of our town's a shithole. Well, let's give it a really give sarcastic nickname. Give it a nickname. name. <laughs> mm. Goldie, I've got Goldie because I'm yeah. on the Gold Coast now, but it's definitely not gold class whatsoever. Um, I don't know how you live there, man. I ha- I, no, I was excited to go. Lewis, to the Gold Coast. you stayed in Surfers Paradise. I'm not like you stayed in the fucking most AIDS part of the fucking city. Um, it's pretty good outside of that. It you must sh- be. I've never felt fear like <laughs> like like walking around. Not fear, but just the feeling of of unsafeness. I've never felt that walking around any city at night. But then I walked around Surface Paradise, and and I was literally like, I'm there's like a there's like a thirty percent chance of a king hit happening to me mm. or someone around me. <laughs> I don't know. It's maybe just because I'm from Queensland that it's just ingrained in me. That's probably just going to happen. It's inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a Queensland. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. You, just, right. you get a tough head with it. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so what's um? So you 
guys are, they are working together, mm. like as an equal partnership. That's yeah. a really interesting thing. Do you guys have an end goal with what you're doing in mind? Yeah, yeah. I think we want to. Is have, that a like, secret? Um, is it? Sounds like a secret now. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I'm like, we've never discussed whether it's a secret. Like, we just talk to each other. I think you've got to have some sort of like, you, like you get to a point where you can be making videos by yourself and that, and then when you know when you start to get more grand ideas, you've got to start looking for people that can, yeah. are better than you at doing a certain thing. Like, I'm a bit of a control freak, and I want control over yeah. everything. I want to design my posters. I'll you know, like everything is like in my control and I don't I despise even if someone says to me this is what you should do fuck you (laughs) yeah even if it is the right thing I'm like well now I'm not going to do that because yeah I'm like that too but but I'm I'm at the point now where it's it it gets too big it gets Mm. impossible for one person to do yeah and and you have to you have to delegate like I'm looking for an editor I can't edit anymore yeah like like with the videos that i want to make and how often i want to make them and and how fucking tedious i've made the job for myself it's like fuck i need someone who can do this for me yep and yeah i think you 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 do need to delegate so to bring somebody on board is a sick idea yeah and but not just that but like to like well yeah just to make the the overall vision come to life is that eventually you just have to you know if you know us being control freaks you have to inevitably get to a point where you go you know what, maybe I, I can't do all this on my own. Maybe yeah. I've got to a point now where, because that's how businesses fucking start. Like mm. maybe this has got too big for, for what I can handle. And if I want this to go any further, then, you know. Uh, but that's the other thing is I was always like, well, Connor just sort of came along. And it wasn't necessarily that I was looking for anyone. Like we just met through Elliot Loney because yeah. Elliot had come up to the Gold Coast for an AIDS um <laughs> Not an AIDS convention, but an AIDS New Year's Eve, and Connor sort of came with him. Receiving treatment for AIDS. (laughs) (laughs) Possibly. Uh, He could have secretly been doing that, knowing Elliot. Um, But yeah, and and Connor was there, and then um, he sort of said, mentioned that Connor was doing this movie with Elliot and Neil and that. And I didn't know that he lived in Queensland, probably. How far away do you live from me, Connor? About an hour. See, we're in this together. And, uh, you guys are so professional. Like, <laughs> um, compare, my, my podcast this is going to be fucking shocked at how good this sounds. Sometimes I record my podcast like just holding my phone like this. I wish I w- yeah. Well, it, one, it does work, but we like wish it was that fucking. You know, this is a pain in the ass. Like to to fucking drag all this shit around. It works though. Yours looks great, and it mm. sounds awesome. Well, we want it to be. We want it to be better. Like eventually, but th- well, the the goal now is just to basically keep putting out content for people for free and um you know be able to get enough money because i just the other day literally like i think it was yesterday morning i went on to my email and just found that um youtube something something has got flagged and someone has now manually gone through and just fucking slashed every one of yeah yeah, it's Just like taking ads off like, all your shit. Yeah, yeah, even videos from like three or four years, like wow. random shit. And I'm like, someone's, someone is sitting behind the computer doing this now. Like, um, yeah, yeah, that hasn't happened to me, and I know it's going to happen mm, at some point. I've but said that sucks, something. That sucks because that's your fucking, that's your money. Yeah, but I don't make too much. Like honestly, like I would probably make like the most I've made on AdSense at the very start. Like maybe. Maybe in like 2013, I remember like getting like a $900 check for a month and I was like, holy crap, yeah. like I've never had that before. But now, I mean, I would struggle to get $150 from AdSense yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's not, um, yeah, it's hard to, I think with, with also with the future of what, what we're doing is really you can't rely on YouTube ads for money anymore. Fuck that. I don't think. What you need to you know, you need merch and Patreon and touring and, yep. and all that kind of shit is, mm-hmm. is where it really comes from. Yep. Yep. And I guess for a long time, for a long time, literally for about two years, when, when it started to get down to just money, I was like, you know what? I would actually rather pay, like not make the $400 from AdSense. I turned all the ads off every video that I started to upload from there because like, fuck that. I hate sitting through ads. I don't, I don't want... Yeah, I don't want people to be annoyed to have to sit through ads. But then we got to a point where we're like, well, you know what? Fuck it. I mean, everyone's got ad blocker on anyway. Um, well, so. I don't think it bothers people. Like, I don't have ad block ad blocker on because mm. I think it's hypocritical as mm. a creator to have it. Yeah. you know, I understand that's how we make our money. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, as someone who doesn't have it on, it doesn't bother. Like I, have, I, have, I, I, I honestly, I didn't know that because I, I wouldn't have noticed that you didn't have ads. Yep, yep. No, I, I swear to God, I was like, I'm just, yeah, didn't really give a fuck about it. But at this point, also, like we make, we make like yeah, 150 dollars a month or whatever on. It's not on much patient. of a loss. No, no. Um, but that's also like when we was just speaking to you before this, I've taken like a, a total different direction with my content and for, I can, I'm totally appreciate the, the fact that, you know, people subscribed for one thing and now I'm giving them a different thing. But um, that's a sacrifice that I've had to make to go, well, yeah. I need to, you know, give this thing some life again. And um, it's like, I just got to jump in a different, different pool. And it's, it's fucking fun. Cause at this point it's like, I'm starting out at square one and I know a lot of people will doubt what I'm doing, but there's a fire inside that's never been yeah. there before. And I, you know, fuck, fuck anyone that doesn't think that I'll be able to do it. If I can put my mind to something very much like yourself, if the mind is on it, then by God, it'll happen. Whether exactly. it's today or tomorrow in a yeah. year's time, fucking oath, watch out. And I dare other people to give it a go. I dare to drop what you've been doing for such a long time. What's cause it's so easy to get yeah. attached to what works. Yeah, and then yeah. when it stops working, you keep like you keep trying to like grasp onto. Well, what, what if I do it this way? And what if I try it this yeah. way? And it's like, nah, put the fucking cunt down and do start something again. Different because you see, you see the like the perils of people who can't let go of what they're doing, even mm. even though it's not working. Mm. Like you see, I, I see some YouTubers with like four million subscribers and they get twenty thousand views. Yeah, and and it's just because they haven't evolved. It's yeah. not. And, and they make you know they make videos like is my channel dead and you just watch it and, and it scares the shit out me, of me me too <laughs> me too but that's why I'm like all right let's just face the fact right yeah. that I'm gonna just make some different content and I'm gonna get nowhere near like yeah. I'm just gonna put put the old thing give it a bullet to the fucking head right yeah and let's start out at square one and it has been as much as it was at risk it has been the best decision I've ever made because I can look at all my analytics now and go wow this is like this is actually growing like this isn't yeah. stagnant this is not because it wasn't like it was ever going down before but it was just never growing, growing the growth up. the growth stopped it just <laughs> that's sort of, like that's the first step to decline yeah that's when i was like oh it's not growing yeah, yeah 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 put it out of its misery now before it before it gets sad before it's like yeah. oh he's really beating a dead horse at this point um so yeah i mean you've got to you've got to be i suppose what's what's the fucking word something to to be able to acknowledge that you know eventually you've got to try something try something new and it's yeah. cool to try new shit as well like i suppose with bi-monthly bull like you've done you've done that sort of a couple of times before but now you're sort of going hard out at that and yeah. i suppose do you feel like it's oh it's so much better it's so much harder but it's way way better mm. and then i had tried it before where i, I actually started bi-monthly bull years ago mm. like in 2014 or something yeah and i did three episodes and i just i just had the self-awareness to go i don't have the resources or the money mm. or the talent to do this properly mm-hmm. yet i'm going to come back in a few years because yeah. i had a job at that time and, yeah. and i i knew what it wanted to be which is what i'm doing now yeah but i also had the had the the self-awareness to be like, I need to stop this before I keep it going, and it and it, and people get bored of it. Before. Dies before it's even ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Which which I think is another is another thing you need to be wary of is is if you have a crazy idea, can you actually pull it off, mm, or yeah. are you just not ready yet? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I suppose that also comes with a financial risk as well, because you've got to yeah. be able to go well. You know, like just recently we did a podcast in, in front of a studio audience and I was like, well, you know, I can just, I can do a podcast in front of an audience, but, you know, I really want to be able to show what I can do with the budget. Give, give me a chance. Let me yeah. just show you what I'm going to do. All right. It's not going to be like this all the time. It yeah. will be one day, but I'm just going to give you a taste to know that I know where I can be and I know that I can pull yeah. this off if the opportunity arises because I don't believe in luck. I believe in preparation meeting opportunity, which is basically what you just said then. Um, and it's like, well, look, I'd never spent that much money on it. Like, it costs us probably five grand to, to pull so it off. It's so expensive to yeah. film live things. Yeah. As yeah. I found out when we're doing uh, well, special. Yeah. And, you it's know, crazy commendments for that. Like, what, what that was, <laughs> though, for you, Lewis, and, and maybe I don't know if your viewers know this, but this is how I see it is you making that money through, you know, the, um, what, what was it, Indiegogo? Yeah. Yep. Through Indiegogo was basically that wasn't just a, a, um, random thing that just happened and it's like oh how the fuck did this happen yeah that is that is a result 
of years and years and years and years and years of work of giving, 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 yeah. giving, 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 and then asking at yeah, one point. I told, do you remember last year I told you I'm, I'm doing a crowdfund next year? Yeah. Like that's, yep. that's, that's, that's how much planning it takes. And, yep. and especially if you're going to ask people for money. Yep. Like I remember before I started my Patreon, I was like, okay, I need money to do what I'm doing, but I need to show them mm-hmm. what that will do. So I, I ended up putting a stupid amount of money into, mm-hmm. into making stuff and, and made sure that I was consistent for like three months. And then I was like, I got nothing and I need this to yep. keep, keep it going. And yep. people responded to that. Yep. I think uh, if, if you, you want to ask people for something, you have to prove yep. that you can deliver. Yeah. I had this conversation with you right, where I was talking about Patreon. I was like, I can't set up a Patreon because I don't put out yeah. weekly content and there's just no I, I would feel like a fucking idiot for going mm. hey give me some money because I you know if you like my stuff and yeah. like but I've got nothing to back that up so that's why I was like well we do a weekly podcast and, and that's the literally the thing that's kept it going every week of me going we need to do something this week like there needs to be another video out I don't think there's ever been a time I think we're we've got 20 episodes or about to be 20 episodes out but we've probably got about 20 Seven twenty six, um, out backlogged. Really? Yeah. How are, are they every week that you're putting them out? E- every week. So, yeah. but the reason that that has to be is because if people are like, I'm basically going. If you give me money, then I'm not going to be the guy that turns out to be like, I'm taking your money and, and running. This yeah. is going to force me to go exactly. every week. I need to make you something fucking because that's what you're paying for. That's what yeah. you're paying for. And it's good because it, it's it's going to grow over time, and it is growing. And and we've had. <clears throat> You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, we haven't been really doing it that long. Um, and it's just unlimited potential because the more that you grow, the more people that will like your stuff and go, hey, look, like, yeah, yeah you've exactly. put out, I've enjoyed maybe four or five of your videos. Because it's not, people aren't going to donate the first video you see. No, why um, would you? No, fuck, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. But if I was like, fuck, there's like seven or eight videos here that I really like, there's going to be a tipping point where they go, fuck, okay, I'll throw you a couple of bucks a month or yeah. whatever. What you do really well, Lewis, is... Um, is sort of, and this is just out of my own laziness of going, I, I can't figure out how to pull it off. Like I need, I need help, um, is like the Patreon stuff and having the different tiers and stuff like that. Cause at the very start, when we first set the Patreon up, we had all these different tiers of like, this is what we can do and, and blah, blah, blah. And then we did it for about a week. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to have to like cancel all these and, and just tell them, look, just donate yeah. whatever you can afford. Like I, I right now I just, what rewards are hard to deliver on because you've um, got to you've, you know you've got to do the posters and the shirts yeah. and stuff like that and i was like i'm gonna have to wait until it's at a point that i can i've got the time to to pull that all off yeah. and, and get that done um philip defranco has like literally got a fucking like i a, a staff watch his to do that fucking vl- I, I watch his vlogs me too just and i just get off on his business <laughs> like i'm looking at this fucking youtuber with looks like 10 employees full time and i'm like ha ah, that's what i want mm. like i want to be the comedy version of that yep. I, like i've like <laughs> i've been waste i wasted like 2 hours this week looking at warehouse rental and yep. figuring out how much it would cost and planning my budget and then and then going cool i've got my plan it's all sorted and i can't afford that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do so the exact that was a same. waste of time. We do the same thing. I literally have like a, like a window that's minimized that I like just on real estate commercial or whatever, oh. where I'm like, okay, what's something that we could get? Like 150 so square meters is just where you some, start. Something nice. And then we're like, oh, no, nah, like it's actually like, yeah, we maybe one day we can afford it. But right now it's still unrealistic. Like yeah. we're going to be really struggling to try and pay that off if we did it. And can we pull off doing it in the hotel room for a bit longer at my house for a bit longer? Well, I think that, that, that a really important thing for the, the business side of being an entertainer, especially online is the, is the journey. Like Mm. people, people want to see you grow. Mm. Like, like I remember with my, with my special, I was like, I could, I could probably do a thousand seater, Mm-hmm. And as my first special, yep. but what I would rather do is do 300 seats for my mm-hmm. first one and then the next one do bigger. Yep. Because my favorite thing about watching stand ups that I like is going to their first special and be like, fuck, that's so small. Yep. Yep. And then and then you look at their current one and yep. it's like in a beautiful 5,000 seat theater yep. and you go, fuck, look how far they've come. That's almost my favorite thing about following someone. Yep. So I always try to be honest about where I'm currently at. 
and 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 tell people where my plans are, but yep. also be like, look, this is how I'm going to get there, kind yep. of thing. Mate, I'm 100 percent the same. I think like, well, firstly, like there is unfortunately it sucks, and it sometimes it, it breaks the illusion for some people. Yeah, that show business is show business, and unfortunately, 90 yep. percent of that is fucking business at the yep. end of the day. Um, I love this, but once you, once your hobby becomes your job, you go, well, either someone else is going to fuck me over money-wise or you I need to get to my shit together. Head, otherwise, yes. you get fucked. And yep. then, then you run out of money and then you can't make shit. Yep. Or there's a huge dip in quality, which yep. is really shit yep. for, as, for, as a viewer. Yep, yep. Um, but the, the journey part is exactly the truth. And, and on, the, on, a, on a similar subject to that, um, to me, the comments that I like the most and what, and what I've realized really makes me go this is like this is continues me doing it is yeah it's really cool getting haha that was really funny and and that and you can get that a million times right but at the end of the day as soon as you realize that comedy is subjective and some people will find something funny and then other people won't find it funny and you realize well it was just fucking meaningless yeah to me like it what what i love to see is holy shit, bro, this is getting really good. I didn't think yeah. you'd be able to do... Holy crap, like, this is, the like, awesome. Can't wait to see this. Can't wait to see... That's, like... Can't wait yes, is the best. You're on the journey with me. Fucking cheers, can't appreciate it. Yeah. Let's go together. Because that's what it's all about. It doesn't matter about the casual fucking guy that might watch it once. Yeah, thanks for watching, bro. I'm, I hope you I, you got something out of it. But it's the ones that stick along for the journey. That's yeah, like, the ones that believe in what you're doing. Yeah. That's really cool. I love that. And, and, you, and, and it's really special because when I think of people that... I, I like and I watch as a fan, there's only really four people that I'm actually invested in yep. across all genres, like comedy, music, everything. It's like four people that I actually really give a fuck about. Yep. And, and, if, and to see when you read comments and you're like, fuck, I'm one of their four. That's the best shit. Mm, yeah. And it makes you go, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And you know, like you're always going to have your own core group of people and, and like it's a community it really it's yeah. a community of people and um i think it's really important to build that and not ignore that and you know you've got to find that happy balance between being able to run it as as a business but also go well look you guys are the shareholders yeah. you know you, you guys aren't just people <laughs> that are you know consuming it but you are it because without you what the fuck is this i'm yeah. back in fucking bum fuck nowhere as an idiot with no one no one watching so yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, the fan base is, is the biggest thing and, and really giving, giving more than what they even expect. What I want is for people to be able to go, why isn't this on TV? Why isn't yeah. this like, you want them to be bewildered by you going not just a step above, but a step beyond what you yeah, should be. Yeah. Like I always say that I'm, I'm not driven by money. I'm driven by a budget. Yep. That's what I want. Mm. That's what I want money for, not to buy shit, just to, to yep. throw it back into the hole yep. and make yep. something better. Yeah. Which yeah. is, you know, that's what that's what the special's all about. But it's funny that people are like, oh, fuck, he's made so much money. It's like, no, I haven't. Can't. I'm, I'm at zero now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I was going to use 15 grand of my own money. Yeah. And, uh, and now, now I'm just do at more. zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can do more, you know. You yeah, can now, I can, now I can put that money that I was going to put into the, the bare bones into shit like adding extra cameras and doing more shit. And, yep, yep, you know. exactly. And you're doing it over two nights, so it's double the cost as well, which a lot of people, that yeah. would probably go over a lot of people's heads. But Well, I didn't realize that either. Where I, was, where I got a quote from the guy who's filming it, mm-hmm. and, and I'm like, I want to do it twice. And he goes, okay, well, and my budget was 15 grand. I'm like, I reckon I can do it in 15. And he yeah. goes, yes, you can, uh, but yeah. you want to do it twice. Yep. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, because it makes sense. You just don't think of that. No, no. Um, I think it's necessary. Yeah, yeah. You have, and when you're filming a special, you do have to film it. Tw- Everyone does it, not just comedians, but artists. Like yeah. a lot of people, if you watch a live, um, you know, show yeah. of, of fucking Michael Jackson or something, that's filmed over multiple nights in different towns, and um, there's multiple versions of. Yeah, of, of course, that. because it's like it's it's. I could do it in one night, and it would be good. But I think just for my own head just to not have this is your only chance right before I get on yeah, stage. Yeah. Like, if you fuck this up, you're done. Just to have that whole thought process yeah. out of my head, yep. is that alone will make the performance twice as good. Yeah. Oh, exactly, yeah. And, you know, that, that, how much would that suck? Because then the, the, all the money, the 15 grand, goes to waste altogether because then you end up with something that you can't use. And I know people yeah. that have to... Like, poor Frenchie, he went out and did a, um, a film a show in Perth 
And there was people at the back the whole time just yelling at, like, just drunk as shit, yeah. just yelling out crap. And he, we were talking about, he's like, I <clears throat> literally cannot use it. Like, it's literally just money down the drain, getting all those people there filming it because it wasn't over two nights. And he's like, yeah. I can't chop between the Sydney show or whatever other show he yeah, filmed. Yeah, we, we did a podcast that's not out yet, but we spoke about that. Um, about yeah, about, that's why you have to do it over two nights because yep. you know you don't know what could happen. A fucking drunk asshole will come in, and then yep. and then even if you even if you do kick those people out, that might just ruin the vibe of the whole show, and then you just have a weird night. Yeah, yeah, and you know, do you, you do you need to go? You're looking yeah, nervous. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, leave. Okay. But, um, just press that. It's done. Yep. Okay. Cool. How long are we going for? This is at uh, 40 minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck cool. That went. That went you do fast. The, um, the extra. Just. Oh yeah. Yep. yeah, we normally go for an hour. Uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't get to the end goal that you guys have. Oh, the end goal. Well, I suppose um, I right now. I've, growing up, I always wanted to be a talk show host, I guess, and then I sort of lost that dream when this all started. Um, but you know the traditional way of like a stand up comedian that becomes a talk show host. Yeah. And then um, and then like podcasts were always a thing that I was interested in. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can like pull that pull that style off and then um like this just so happened that we me and connor had made a video together one video together and i was trying to like think of other things that we could do and then i said oh well you know i wouldn't mind doing like a podcast where i interview people i like talking shit yeah. i can talk you know we do stand up comedy we can talk by ourselves for an hour yeah it's a one-sided conversation like i could open that up to someone else and connor just said well i actually He'd started a podcast before and he's had all this equipment and he's like, well, I'll just bring it down and we can try it. And we literally sat at a table and did it and it worked. And I, so eventually what we want this to be is sort of like a, a mix between like, like if Oprah, Ellen and Joe Rogan had like a, a threesome and somehow that. that. They could be like a... Not your podcast, just the threesome. <laughs> just the threesome. <laughs> Me too. See Me you later, too. Connor. See you, Connor. Take care. Thanks for everything, mate. I'll see you soon. No, I think I think what you're doing is great. I think mm, it's really thanks. cool, and there's such a gap for it in Australia as well. Mm. Like I, I can't I can't think of a single person. Like that's that's kind of the upside and the downside of Australia. Is the downside is it's so small, and and there's not there's not too many opportunities. But the yeah. upside is no one's doing anything, like online wise at the at the highest level. Like mm. we're not even there yet. Like you look at what Joe Rogan's doing, and, and there's like talk shows on YouTube. Nobody in Australia is at that level, and that that is something that we can reach and be the first. Yeah, yeah, of course. And it's also like making sure that you can do something that's, um, you know, that it's got your your name on it, and yeah. it, and it's not just like you know, because you watch so many TV shows on TV that are just a ripoff of fucking John Oliver that it sends especially me f- Australia. Oh yeah, I mean ABC just get a fucking Woody over that, and they're like, like the what weekly. It- with Charlie Pickering, they it's didn't just... even try. They didn't even try to go how because first of all, John Oliver's concept is not an original concept. Nothing's an original concept anymore. But you know, like it, it was just so blatantly like it was John Oliver comedy say, said by Charlie Pickering. Like it wasn't like yeah, here's the format. Right, like with the Jim Jeffries show, right? It's a similar format to like yeah, the Jim Daily Jeffries Show. Jim is a perfect example of someone who took the format, which is unoriginal as hell, yep. but he he made it his. Yeah, formats. By the way, it's not like formats don't need to be original. Like no. an interview no. is like whether you like it or not, it's always been a thing and it's always going to be a thing. That's a format. Yeah. What can you do? To change it, how can yeah. how can you work within that framework? Well, of, like let's like bi monthly bull. Bi monthly yeah. bull is the, the, oh, yeah. the tonight show format. The yeah. only thing is, there's no audience because it's my fucking bedroom. Yeah, and then it's just me taking that and being like, okay, how can I make it my version of a talk show, yeah. which is just you know a whole lot less Trump bashing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, see, that's what sends me wild. I'm not necessarily a, a Trump fan at all. I don't hate the guy. I don't believe in the guy. Um, I sort of was optimistic about it at the start, and now I'm just like, eh, it's yeah, just another one. Yeah, we talked about that on, on your first episode, yeah, where we yeah, were I was, both kind I was, of optimistic about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really optimistic at all anymore. I'm just like, I'm more like, blah. Uh, I think he's just, uh, I think he's just I- I- impulsive. Not yeah, in a dangerous way, no. just in a, he just doesn't really think before he says shit. Yeah, and I, that's always worked for him. So why would he change it? That's that's all. Spot on, spot on. And I, you know, I think now he's probably just coming to terms with the fact that. And this is what I think over over the last, whatever, six months that he's been president, he's probably just realising that, fuck, I am just another cog in the wheel and I can say yeah. that I'm going to ban trans from the military, but actually 
I you don't, can't. I can't do that. Um, yeah. I can't do as much as what I thought I would do. So let's just say some crazy shit to throw. You know, if I've got a scandal over here, then I'm going to say, well, ban the trans because the media just take it like fucking meats. Because essentially what Trump is, is <clears throat> what Trump has always been. Trump the president is what Trump has always been. And that's a, a walking, talking reality TV show. Yeah. And we see it on the news instead. It's, it's almost like, bizarrely, he's taken the presidency and just... And just like brought it into his brand, like he's bigger than he is big, the yeah. presidency. Like his whole, it's it's like when a company buys and like when Apple bought Beats, it's like they're still Beats, but it's Apple's way bigger. It's yep. like Trump just took the presidency and just enveloped it into his own yep. thing. Yep. And now, like you like when when I look at him, I don't think when I look at Barack Obama, I was like that's the president of America. Mm. But when I look at Trump, I'm like that's Donald Trump. Mm. And and he, oh yeah, he's he also just, the president. Yeah, he so happens to be the yeah. guy that's running the free world. But I mean, he's not really running it. But um, that's a whole other can of fucking shit. But um, yeah, politics is interesting. I think Australia is a fucking mixed bag of pot. Like, yeah, it's just a shit fight. It's, yeah, just, it's just crazy what they're doing now with like, the, let's do a postal vote with the gay marriage. And I'm like. I don't care about anything enough to post a letter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I saw that and I, and I was I was like, honestly, I don't think I'm going to vote anything on that. I, I can't be fucked going to yep, Australia Post. Yep. Now, I saw something the other day and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this now. I believe it was a quote from a comedian named Doug Stanhope. I think that's the name. I, I hope that's... He actually, is a comedian. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, so it's from him and it was a meme that I saw on Facebook <clears throat> uh, that someone had posted in a some like status about the gay marriage thing he's like an old dude he usually wears a plaid sport coat. Mm. and he said um i think the gay ma- he, like, along these lines uh, i think the gay marriage uh thing is a trick question he said um yeah this they is they uh who in their right mind would love someone enough that they would say, hey, babe, I love you so much and I want this to be here forever, that we should get the government involved yeah. in on it and get the lawyers and the banks involved in yeah. it as well. Why are they involved in marriage in general? Well, that's what I was... I say this all the time on my podcast when I'm yelling alone, where I understand marriage if you're religious mm-hmm. because it's like we're going we're gonna to make a promise to God yes. to stay together and yep. we'll bring God into our relationship. That makes perfect sense yep. if that's what you believe. Yep. But but if you don't believe in God, I don't get marriage. Marriage is li- if you if you don't believe in God, like marriage was is, is a religious ceremony. Yep. That's where it started, yep. and that's where it, where it will always mm-hmm. kind of be in that realm, yep. no matter how non-religious you are. Yep. That's what it is. It's yep. a religious ceremony. Why would you if if you're not religious, all it is is two people signing contracts yep. and involving the that that involve the government. A third party that has nothing to do. It's like atheists that celebrate Christmas. I go, what are you doing? Yeah, it's... No, I, I understand the atheists that celebrate Christmas because that's like a family thing. That'd be like that'd be like if, if atheists... I don't know. Signed a contract that brought the government in on yeah, Christmas. Yeah, I suppose that's a... Bit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, though that's that's sort of the the lunacy in the whole in the whole thing is because it's like if you're you, you you could have a celebration of your love and have a, a, a marriage yep. without signing the contract, mm-hmm. making it legal. The only thing you're doing is is I don't know. I I understand why gay people want it in like the rights thing because that's something that they've been they want it because they've been denied it because that's yep. what old powerful white people yep. who don't like gays that's yep. the only thing they can deny of gay yep. people so yep. i get why they want it for that reason yep. but i think that once they get it it's going to be like wow this wasn't that good was it yeah well there's still fucking somalian children that are being kidnapped and shit yeah. like nothing ever changes but at the same like you just said I, I totally agree with that that it's it's the premise that is the that is that's what they're fighting for i don't think they're necessarily fighting to change i've never heard the argument be we want to change what's in the bible so that's why i'm like religion like yeah exactly religion don't get involved like they're not they're not coming into the religious side of marriage it just so happens that there's a religious term for marriage and that the government also has a term yeah, called like, marriage dude, if, you're, if you're super religious and your religion says no gays go for it yeah but just just don't don't have a muslim wedding yeah whatever you, yeah then there you go and yeah. then that they're, they're not they're not fucking with yeah. with what your definition of marriage is but yeah. Yeah, yeah, marriage has changed. It's, it's not a religious thing anymore. 
and 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 that's why I just don't understand why you would want to get married if you're not yeah. if you don't think it's a partnership yep. between yep. you, your partner, and God. Yep, yep, I agree, and I also believe that even though I I agree with gay marriage, I think I don't know why it's not legal because I mean yeah. it's not going to fucking change anything, but it's only going to make people happier that are gay. So whatever, but. I also believe that there is a right for, you know, if, if a church or a certain service wants to be able to say, well, no, that's against my <clears> religious <throat> beliefs, then okay, whatever. Like, don't go there and don't, you know, if that's, if that's what yeah. they want to be able to say, then... Yeah, like, I, yeah it's like that uh, when they're in America where that whole fucking, those bakers didn't want to make a cake for a That was weird, wedding. though, because I'm like, that's not the... Like, if a church says, no, we, we don't do gay marriages here because it's against what yeah. we believe, then I'd be like, okay, well, just don't have it at that church then. Like, yeah. they... Even though I don't agree with that, I still think, well, they've still got the right to say no. Like, yeah. if, if I'm a Catholic and I want to have a Catholic uh, wedding inside of, inside of a mosque, they have the right to say no and I'm not going to argue it, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, they don't because, believe like, dude, those this values. this is a mosque. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. So, but, you know, it's such a fucking, like, rabbit hole debate and there's so many, like, I always, I've been reading some, some different things and there's just so many things that I've never considered before. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm out. I've got no dog in this fight anyway. So you, know, you just oh, can yeah. sort it out. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they should definitely have it. I think this is, if, if you're gay, right, you should, or if you're, if you're a reasonable person, you should fight for gay marriage yep. and then get it legalized and then none of you do it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd How be the best that? shit. What a fucking fuck you. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, exactly. We change it. You know what? We'll just do civil fucking partnerships or whatever they're called anyway. We'll yeah, do it the old-fashioned way, yeah. just like you guys. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, just what else is going on? <laughs> All right, well, we should, do, we should do the questions. I normally have okay. questions. Um, it's yeah. just life advice stuff. Oh, sweet. Um, it's nothing, because I hate... Uh, I, it's arrogant, I think. Ask me anything about me. Yeah, I boring. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Plus, I love the I love their emails because most of them are anonymous, and it's just like hearing really good gossip yeah. that I'm not yeah. involved in at all. Yeah, it's and you can best. have an uh, have an opinion on it. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, this is a banger. This is great. I right. read this the other day, and I was like, "This one's for Josh." All right. So the headline of this email is, "I cucked a man and potentially destroyed a marriage." Uh, is that from a male or female? Then? This is from I'm a confused. male. Okay, all right. It's from a male. Hey, Lewis. Sorry, it's a long one. Uh, my name's Zach. I'm a 23-year-old unemotional weeaboo who got lucky with puberty, making my appearance more appealing than my personality. Fuck, I wish that happened to me. Fuck. What, what, what is a... We- what do you say? Weeaboo? Weeaboo. What's That's that? Like, uh, someone, it's like someone who's really into Japanese culture. Okay, like, Har- like what is it? Like Harajuku girls and oh, it's just a weebo. It's just someone who you know they they watch anime, okay, okay, manga. Right, yeah. Like they just they just it's yep. like it's like a comic book nerd, yep, but okay. for fucking all Japanese Asian stuff, shit. Yeah. Um, uh, I used to be a beta male who could not communicate well with women, but I've become so much more relaxed and natural now, just because he's attractive, dog. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I work with this very attractive woman we'll call Sarah. She's 35, looks great for her age, blessed with a great hip-to-waist ratio, smart, etc. Sexist pig. The only catch, (laughs) and this is a big catch, (laughs) is she's married and her husband works in the same company as us, although in a different building. Oh. It's a big catch. Mm. Uh, After six months of some subtle in-office flirting, she hits me up with a message asking if we can talk. I oblige, not thinking much of it. Turns out she's super attracted to me and has been since day one. Also, she says her husband has gotten upset with us flirting. Basically, she confesses that she wants me. Me being a man of morals, I tell her that I'm also attracted to her, but considering her marriage, I don't plan on taking any action. What a fucking gentleman. Yeah, yeah. That's great. She gives me a hypothetical question, here we go, where she asks, if given the chance, would I sleep with her? As I am a man of culture, I deny it, and she goes quiet for a few days, which throws me off. But this is where it gets interesting. Fast forward to that weekend. She calls my phone, first time ever, so I thought something must be up. Boy, oh boy, as she explained why she was calling, I couldn't help but laugh. Her husband is 38, very manly, about three times my size, is a cuck. Do you know what a cuck is? Yeah, these are the people that watch other yeah. people. They get off on watching their wife get fucked. This is like the true definition of cuck, not this right-wing insult shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that's how I found out what a cuck was. <clears throat> yeah, I had to Google it, and I was like, fuck, why did I Google that? What does that? cuck mean? And then, yeah, Google definitions gives it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those who don't know what it is, oh, he explains it, yeah, blah, right. blah, blah. Um, 
and she had spoken to him about getting a hall pass to sleep with me. As the conversation progresses, I find out she's been trying to do this before for his sake, but never been attracted to anyone enough to go the full way. Among a fair few other factors, this has been one straining point in their marriage as they don't have the same sexual interests as he can no longer make her come. Oh, you fucking break up. Yeah, I know. Just break up if that's like, oh, man. Yeah. So basically, instead of breaking up, the husband is being like, maybe you should fuck someone else. And she's like, oh, but I'm not attracted to anyone else enough. Just break up. Just yeah, but like, how does it go from that level to then go? I'm gonna get off on watching someone else fuck you. Like that's another fucking yeah. fold in that. Like, you know, you can have relationships like we don't get along together anymore. So you know, we'll have an open relationship. Yeah. That's a thing. But then the the sexual attraction to that's well, another that level. doesn't make any sense. Like if you don't if if like if you're if you're like a uh, if you get off on seeing your partner with somebody else, mm-hmm. surely you would incorporate that into your sex life, not. Like, replace Place. your sex life with other people. With that. I don't know, man. That is so fucking complicated. It's hard to step into that mind. Yeah. Um, anyway, here's where I need your advice. It all happened too fast. In that moment, I thought, you know what? Fuck it. If he's okay with it and we can do it, we can do it just to get it out of your system. Why not? Mm-hmm. I figured if he was into it, then it's pretty much a win-win for everyone. I was fucking wrong. That night, we get together. Uh, I give probably the best performance of my life and leave her completely satisfied. Alpha as fuck, even though he's a weep. (laughs) Uh, Over the next two weeks, from then till now, she tells me that it broke her husband. The fact that she enjoyed it so much has emotionally destroyed him. Fuck me. What a surprise. Yeah, but it must have been like, they must have, who knew, like there was going to be a line between like, so he has to wait, be good, did he but not watch? too good. He didn't write that. Well, I'm sure. He, I'm sure it would because isn't that what it is? Like otherwise, it's just an open. Well, he didn't write if he was there. Surely, if he was there, he would have written it down. I feel like he wasn't there. Okay, well let's it. let's have two answers. <coughs> well, maybe that'll change it. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Broke her husband. This is not helping their marriage. And now she's overseas visiting family. A few nights ago, after she left, I got a phone call from an unknown number. It's the husband. He stole my number from her phone and called me to say back off. Now, as I said, I'm a man of morals, so I explained that I was never intending to steal his wife. <laughs> uh, his demand was that we don't speak outside work, which I understand, but I don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> uh, quick thinking led me to tell him that I agree to his request, but in return, he must tell his wife that we've had this conversation. That's fair. This is a very level-headed yep, dude, yep. apart from fucking someone else's wife. Yeah, but, I mean, she said it's okay. And yeah, he, he thought that, that everyone was into he it. Was led down the path yeah uh he reluctantly agreed as i forced him into a corner and said he'd regretted ever contacting me hashtag cucks gonna get cucked <laughs> i'm 100 percent certain this will be the final straw all right it's almost over uh while sarah has been away she's confessed feelings for me mm. and had time to consider taking a break from her marriage oh this is fucked this guy's gonna get murdered this is where this story ends uh, I ask you from one lanky fuck to another, what do I do? Should I continue as is and laugh at this all while I sleep with a to be divorced woman or do I back away and not get involved? I don't intend in being in a long term relationship with this woman and she knows this, but she wants to spend time together when she gets back. I've said, let's give some things a chill first to see what happens. Pretty sure I was a catalyst to destroying their marriage. Love your work. Have a shit one. Thanks, mate. Whoa. You got to run. Yeah, that's what I think. I think, like, it's not just the husband. Like, he can't just put all the, the issues on him. She's obviously also in yeah. on that sort of shit. What's to say, like, that, you know, that she wouldn't do that again? Like, you know, I don't know. If you, if that's, if you don't want to live through that... Well, yeah, he said he do. doesn't want a long-term relationship. So well, the question is, should he keep fucking her? And I think, no. Nah. Nah, no way. Get it's the fuck on dangerous. Tinder. It's a swipe away for fuck's sake. Like, yeah. what do you need? What do you need to put yourself through some sort of fucking episode of the OC? For, yeah, like, for a, <laughs> he said he's good looking. Have a wank or something. Yeah. I don't know. Like, just like move the fuck along. That's yeah. that's. But great story. It Tell is your a good kids. Story. Yeah. 
I mean, don't tell them when they're like five. But yeah, when... don't tell her kids either. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be your kids. Yeah, uh... just leave it, man. It's fun. <laughs> you don't want to deal with that. It's just going to get you stabbed by her husband, or you're going to end up in like a really awkward HR meeting because they work in the same company, all three of them. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, I didn't so do that. It's just going to get you sat down, right, yeah. Thomas? We need you to stop fucking. <laughs> Just yeah, Mitchell's wife. Yeah, is that is that the? Mitch, I don't know what their names Mitchell, are. Mitchell, let's call him Mitchell. You big cuck, Mitchell. Um, yeah, I agree. Would you run? I would run. Yeah, fuck that. I'd run far away. I would never. I would never go into that in the first place. Oh, maybe for a good story. It is a good story, but like, make it up. Make the story. Up. If yeah. that's the sort of story that you want, make the cunt up. Unless you're into that, then that's okay. Like, I've got nothing against people that are into that. But if you don't want to put yourself down that rabbit hole, then. And just don't fuck someone else's wife because that's the thing with this cuck thing. I, I, I step into their shoes and I, and I go like, okay, I guess, I guess if that's what they think they like, that's what they like. But it's one thing to be like, man, it'd be great to see someone else fuck my wife. But then it's another thing to actually see that shit. I reckon there's a very big difference to thinking it and then actually seeing it in front of you. And I reckon that's how a lot of yep. fucking murders would happen. Yep. I I just can't think of anything worse. I nah, have horrible. had a girlfriend that I found out had, like, kissed a bunch of dudes when when we were together. And I was like, like, it broke my heart. I couldn't yeah. imagine, like, I, fuck, that sound just as cucky as fucking Mitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it broke my heart. No, um, but that would be only just as now. bad if you, if, if you told her to do that. And then, yeah, I can't imagine like seeing her doing it, and then like I just my brain melts when I think how how like imagine I, I, getting this off. This is what I think would happen. I reckon like you'd see it, and then I'm not into this at all, right? I think it's fucking weird, but I always think about the the husband and what's going through their mind. I reckon in the moment when you're watching it happen, you'd be like, oh, this is sick, but then you've got to drive home. Yeah, fuck. It's that adrenaline rush and then real life kicks in. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I think when reality, when you've got to drive home, it'd be like three days later when it's like Sunday morning and you guys are, I don't know, she's reading the paper and you're cooking pancakes. Something would just snap and you'd be like, you liked it too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But why is there a line? Where did, that's, it, that's, it, that's where it even goes further. It's like, how much was she supposed to like it until it got too... Like, yeah. Like, when was the satisfying moment for him and then where, where was it the point that it was too far? Was that's that what shit? I mean. That's, like, that's what it sounds like, exactly what happened, where the guy was into it, and then, but then he was like, oh, she liked it too much. Do you think maybe he, like, he went into this thinking that maybe he could prove to her that no one else could make her come in, like, to oh, make himself feel thing. better, and then he got, you know, he, you know bit the hand his that gamble fed him. fucked up his gamble fucked up i reckon that's more yeah. likely if that's the way he's reacted then i reckon that's more likely so dude get the fuck out he's a psychopath yeah don't do that that's 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 our advice get the fuck away from that all right was there anything that you wanted to plug before we wrap it up josh no. what, are you, what are you working on at the moment um well just fucking putting out more more videos and and podcasts and we've the got a conspiracy few podcast Consp- we haven't said it all episode no we haven't no no um <laughs> Yes, it's that. And I still, I could sort of regret naming it that because I'm like, fuck now. Anything I talk about is automatically disqualified under that name. But um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And then uh, working on a few like different documentaries that I want to fucking get around on some weird shit. Yeah. Make, might give Mitch a call and, and uh, explore that world. But yeah, that's sort of what I'm doing. And I'm on tour for a little bit. Um, and then oh yeah Josh is doing shows I've seen Josh perform uh, we, we did the well, same venue the best and he one, fucking but... killed it every night so I recommend I Josh I don't know about that but <laughs> <laughs> he's too humble alright see Josh live check out his podcast thanks for coming on no worries and uh, yeah have a shit one guys <laughs>